Hello everybody, my name is Laura Beatriz. I work as a software engineer at YOD and today I would like to talk about a pretty special subject for me um, and they really, they really changed the way that I write my tests in React application, which is TDD and BDD, specifically in React. So before starting, uh, I would like to introduce a little bit about my, myself. I'm based in Brazil in a beautiful city called Florianópolis. And the technology that I'm currently learning on and that I'm currently working with is mainly TypeScript, React, Node.js, JavaScript. I'm learning a lot of things about Python uh, in order to like dive in some DevOps things. Although I'm also really passionate about Elixir, so a lot of, a lot of tools to learn. Uh, regarding to personal things, I'm really passionate about Harry Potter and uh, like I, I love to play violin. If you want to chat about any of these things, uh, feel free to reach me out on Twitter or send me a message on LinkedIn. I will be really happy to answer all of you. And if you want to follow my project, see what I'm currently working on, feel free to follow me or just uh, see what I'm doing on GitHub. Before starting to dive into the topic, it's really important to see the summary of today's talk in order for you to gather some expectation and also for you to grab a cup of coffee before we really start to, to talk about it here. So the first topic, it's just for us to go back to the time in order to see where we are in the timeline from the testing cues along all of the years. So along the years, we started to get better and better in testing cues and it really um, improved a lot the way that we write tests in React application nowadays. Testing practice overview. I will explain what is CDD and BDD in an overview, not in depth, for people that are watching um, the, the talk right now and doesn't, uh, are not familiar about it. Why do you use testing practice in React? When do you use testing practice in React? And the daily flow of developing a feature with TDD and BDD. Some disclaimers before starting. Testing is fundamentally related to software maintainability. So I don't want here to be explicitly and try to, try to force a point that tests are like just work if you apply testing practices like TDD and BDD. The point is that this testing practice has a lot of benefits. It can improve much more the confidence in our mindset in shipping software. But even if you're writing tests without following these methodologies, the maintainability of your software is going to be higher than without having tests. But we also have to be aware of the trade-offs of the testing practices so we need to understand what is CDD, what is BDD, to see if it makes sense for uh, the project that we are currently working on, for my team, etc. So the majority of concepts also mentioned in this talk are not specifically tied to React, but they can also be applied in other ecosystems. So if you want to gather something that we are going to talk about here and try to apply it to a different library, uh, feel free to do it because there are some things here that is specifically tied to software engineering testing itself and not so much about React, but we're going to shift, shift our mindset to adjust that to React. Now, I've tried to design a testing to timeline. It's not that good. I've tried my best, um, but in order for us to understand where we are nowadays, and a point of testing tools quality and how these testing tools along the years changed the way that we write software nowadays. So as you can see in 2011, even before, uh, when React was released, we had Mocha. It was being used for the majority of the community as a test runner. Uh, the thing is that Mocha was really good and it's still really good. It's still being used in a lot of projects for a lot of engineers. But the point is that it indeed has an overhead when trying to configure it uh, because 
it provides a lot of flexibility on the way that you're going to make your assertions depending on the task style that you're going to use. When React was first released in 2013, we didn't have a certain queue in order to render a component and make assertions about a certain output. So we were still waiting about what would come in the future. In 2014, Jazz came out, released by Facebook also, and it really shifted the whole community uh, to use it because it introduced a test runner style that we didn't have to configure a lot of things in the beginning. And it really helped it a lot to reduce the overhead of configuration. Even nowadays, uh, Create React app already ships a package with JS installed and some configurations. So it really improves that we installed, we create a React application and we are able to have a test runner already configured. Cypress also was released in, in the same year of JS, which uh, brought a lot of benefits for the test community in general, not just React, uh, but the JS test community in general. We started to get all the benefits of doing end-to-end -end tests and integration tests without having a lot of pain due to slower C, low, slow CIs and a lot of things. And along the years, um, also nowadays, Cypri is getting bigger and bigger as an organization that has one of the main goals as improving uh, the way that tests are written in software. So another important point here uh, is that in 2016, Enzyme was released by Airbnb. An amazing job. I think that it was one of the main points of our community in general because every React engineer that started to write tests started, I think, with Enzyme. I started with Enzyme and um, it was amazing for me to learn how to write tests with Enzyme. And... Um, it really gave me more confidence to ship software. But along the years, I started to see some issues. I started to notice that some of my tests were getting almost unmaintainable in a way that a new engineer that wasn't that familiar with the tool was really hard to understand uh, the tests when trying to read it because it was not semantic in a way of what would the user do in the UI, like click, hanger, certain component, like the abstraction was much more related to the implementation details of some components. Um, and although we had a lot of benefits with the two, we started to see the trade-offs of it. In 2019, the community almost, um, like the whole community, I think, shipped it to use React testing library. An amazing library that was released and it changed the way that we as React engineers write our test cases because now we are able to write test cases that resemble user actions and this gives us much more confidence when shipping software. For you that don't know what is TDD, TDD resembles for testing driven development. It is a cycle based on three steps. The first one referred as red, the second one referred as green, and the last one referred as refactor. It motivates us to think on the outcome first. There is a common prejudice that it's not possible to apply TDD to the UI building process. I think that uh, this prejudice comes from some engineers that are more familiar in code bases where you are able to do assertions in certain, in certain defined data structures. And when we start to think about a separate environment showing the output of an UI, it's kind of difficult in the first place to start learning how to test it. But that's one of the main points that, um, that we see the benefits when doing UI tests in React applications because we learn how to test the actions that our users are going to do. 
And uh, the last step here that I would like to talk about is the refactor step. So a lot of the times I've noticed that even if you're falling to DD, you're probably going to make the test pass in the first place, but you're going to forget about the code. And it's always a continuous cycle of making your code get better and better. And if you forget about the refactor step, there's a really high chance of you leaving some code that's not like with the best quality at all. And it's going to give maintainability issues. So the refactor test, I think that is one of the most important test, uh, steps for uh, TDD. BDD stands for Behavior Driven Development. BDD can be acknowledged as a methodology and it's a branch of TDD. It really improves the communication between engineers, stakeholders to understand the correct outcome. So as engineers, we are able to write tests that share in specific vocabulary. We are also able to know what is the definition of done of a certain task by writing cleaner test cases that resemble all the different user paths. And uh, for instance, if you have a user story like that one, we are going to write each test based on, uh, on the user story with business, business vocabulary shared by, by all the stakeholders. And this is going to make that the tests are focused exclusively on the business value.